Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this week's study. Um, we're going to continue on where we left off, of course, on Thursday, and we've begun looking at Tola and Jair. We had finished off um, <coughs> the downfall of Abimelech, uh, that new line dealing with the Bramble. And um, so now we're gonna, going to uh, try to understand what we have done previously with this line. So before we begin, can you join, join me in a little prayer? Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning. We invite your spirit uh, to direct us and teach us. We know, Lord, that uh, we're dependent upon you for all things, especially for the understanding of truth. And we ask, Lord, for strength to follow the light that you have given us, no matter where it leads. We pray for each person in this movement, the people who are studying these truths. And we ask that you can strengthen them and guide them. Help us to understand these things here this morning. May your Holy Spirit lighten our minds and correct us from all error. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> um, so, uh, good morning, everyone. So some of some of the usual people aren't here, but that's okay. And. Um, what we're looking at right now is this line. Now, I adjusted a few things on it uh, <clears throat> before the study here, and we're just going to go over Tola and Jair. So one of the things we know about each of these lines is, uh, and I'm just going to go back to this slide here. On the judge's line, Tola and Jair is the arrival of the second angel's message. And uh, we know that we put it on this way, Mark, July 1820. Now we know the message of Gideon, which is marked as 11-9, that's November 9th, 2019, is a message regarding the second angel arriving, but it is not marked as the second angel arriving. This is the message of Tola and Jair. Now, part of what we know about these lines is we know that uh, the arrival or, or the empowerment of the first angel and the arrival of the second in our line are both September 11th, though September 11th as the arrival of the second angel is also November 9th, 2019. But we've always placed those two wave arms as 9-11 and those two symbols stand there. So, so when we look at um, Tola and Jair, we're saying that this is the arrival of the second angel. And, and this one is going to start the way that we had drawn out this line is that it commences with July 18, 2020. So obviously its primary application is not proclaiming July 18, 2020, but the events that follow July 18, 2020. Specifically, uh, we have here, uh, these symbols, we have 45 years, and we also mark 777 days. That is, we mark to September 3rd, 2022. And we did this in a study quite a ways back. Uh, I can't remember the date now. I had found it out when we did the study. Um, uh, actually, it's March 15th, 2023. Is that the date? What was the date? Because there's March 15th, 2023. I think that was when we looked at it previously. So, so I think that's actually the last time we looked at it and we put up, made this line, if, if that's correct. Is that correct? Angela, are you the one that pointed that out? Or was it or not? So, because um, I think that was the date. I'm trying to remember, but now I can't remember. Um, so we're going to have to look that up. Um, so so in, in looking at this line, we're just going to go to the scriptures here now. So in Joshua chapter 10, we have five verses. Um, not Joshua, 
Joshua, Judges chapter 10. Uh, we have five verses, that's verse 1 to 5. And um, so it says, after Abimelech, there arose to defend Israel, Tola, the son of Pua, and the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, and he dwelt in Shamir in Mount Ephraim. And he judged Israel 23 years and died and was buried in Shamir. And after him arose Jair, a Gileadite, and judged Israel 22 years. And he had 30 sons that rode on 30 ascals, and they had 30 cities, which are called Heba, Jair, unto this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Kimon. So that's all we have, five verses. And I, I can show those on the screen there. There they are. Um, now, when, when it says after Abimelech, of course, we know that that's historically the case. But we're not putting Tola and Jair after Abimelech with Abimelech as a judge. And instead, we just have Jotham, 70th son, paralleling Samuel Snow's letters. So, <clears throat> um, so here with uh, um, these two periods of time, the 23 years and the 22 years, we noted that that's a period of 45 years. So we use that as a symbol. That is, they, they symbolize uh, the number 45. And what does the number 45 represent? Anybody know what it represents? I mean, we know it's the first place we see it is on the 1843 chart. And it's the number of years from 1798 to 1843. Right, so it represents the 1335, the end of the 1335. Which ends April 18th, 1844. So what does it symbolize? Okay, so we apply it to the 45th president of the United States. So in our history, how can we connect the 45 years on the chart to the 45th president? What's, what's, what's the precedent for doing that? What's the reason for doing that? Why have we, how do we see a, a parallel to those two numbers. They, from the surface, they seem to be unconnected. So what connects them? Well, when uh, 45 and 1798 to 1843, mm -hmm. the end of that was considered a fulfillment of a prophecy. Okay. It was a prediction. A prediction was going to take place at the end of it. Yeah. And with the 45th president, uh, we had anticipated the fulfillment of her prophecy okay. in uh, his presidency, and both, in a sense, didn't come to pass as predicted. Okay. So, so we're connecting those two, and you're saying because they deal with a prediction of the prophecy. Now, what about Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45? Is there any connection? We had, yeah, so we had typified Reagan being the 40th president. Okay. Beginning with the time of the end. And so we have from verse 40 to 45, basically from the time of the end. Okay. The 40th, the 40th president to 45th president, the inverse 40, 
five. Mm -hmm. Right. So the real thing that ties it together is the times of the end. Right. So in Millerite history, it's a period of 45 years. In our history, it's Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. Technically, Daniel 11, verse 45b or 40b to, to uh, 45, right? Because Daniel verse 11, verse 40a is 1798. And so that span of time, that verse 40, covers all that period from 1798 to 1989. But in Millerite history, there's the 45 years. And that 45 years is the difference between the 1335 and the 1290, technically, right? Because they both begin in 508. Now, um, so we now have this Tola and J here. And they have together this 45. But there's two different symbols here. The 23 obviously relates to the 2300 years. And the 22 is a symbol of restoration. And they're placed here together to make this 45 years. Now, we're not taking it literally as 45 years. What we're doing is we're taking this 45 years, these two symbols, and oops, no, we're putting them together here, and we're saying that that 45 years is Tola and J year. It's the 23 and the 22, and we line them up with the 252 and the 525. That is just as 252 and 525 add up to 777 seven, seven days, right? Uh, the 23 and the 22 add up to 45 years. Now, um, we know that we're going to take from J ear these three 30s, and we're going to put them together, divide them by 12, and get the 2525.5, so 25,252.5. We do the same thing in the story of Samson, because there's the 30, 30, 30 there. And um, so we say that that represents this 777 seven days. Now, is there any criticism of this? Do we think that this that there's a problem with what we've done here, putting the 23 and the 52 and the 22 and the 525 together like that? Is should we see this in some other way? I mean, we could put uh, you know November 9th in there and say the 252 re relates to November 9th to July 18th. And the 525 goes from July 18th to December 25th. But we have taken here the 777 days as starting on July 18th and going to September 3rd, 2022. And that may or may not be correct, but that's, that's what we did. And so we have to ask ourselves, is this correct? Or is this a misapplication? Should we change this line in some way? Now, part of what we do when we have a line, so in examining this line, we know that we have a period of darkness and we have um, an increase of knowledge and we have these way marks establishing first the arrival of a message, its formalization, and then its empowerment. And that message needs to be accepted in order for the second message to be, to be received. And then the second message, it's also going to have its arrival, formalization, and empowerment. And then it leads to a third message. So, so we had constructed this several months ago. Now we're looking at it. We're trying to say, how is this line? Is this line valid? Is there some other way that we would look at Tola and Jay here? Because you know, an obvious idea is that this, this could start in November 9th and we, we're just misplacing this. <clears throat> but where we were at the time when we were studying this, this seemed to us to be uh, the logical way to construct this line. 
So any, any criticisms or any questions, any difficulties that we see with this line at this point, because we're going to go through it um, and try to see if this makes sense based on the verses that we have. So first, um, if this, if July 18th, 2020 is the arrival of this first message, what is the darkness? So we, we haven't, when we drew out this line, we didn't establish what this darkness was. We didn't really explain it. We put the dates, we put the way marks, we put some explanation. We need in some way to understand the, this line, what, what this darkness is, what this message is. Now, we only have these five verses, right? So we don't have a great deal of information. It doesn't tell us much about what they did. We have symbols attached to it. Now, one of the things we noted yesterday is that if we took the names of Tola and Jair and took the Hebrew numbers, and added them together, which is 11,410, we could tie this history back to uh, December 26, 1991. That is, the Soviet Union falls, we'll say December 25th, and, and that's an inclusive count of 777 days. That is from November 9th, 1989 to December 25th, uh, 1991 is 777 days as an inclusive count. And then we're going to count then at the end of December 25th, starting December 26th, all the way to March 23rd, 2023. That's the start of March 23rd, 2023. It's 11,410 days. Now, the significance of March 23rd, 2023 is it is the first day of the first month. It's exactly seven years to April 5th, 2030, which is also the first day of the first month. And, and in fact, it's uh, the 2,570 days, right? So that's um, seven biblical years. Obviously it's not Gregorian years. We have the same number of days in the week of Christ study. When we go from the 10th day of the seventh month in 27 AD to the 10th day of the seventh month in 34 AD. So 25,070 days. It's 25, 20 plus 50. And so we have that same number here. Um, so I could probably put that in here just to... So, so that's what we get with Tola and Jair, just those two names. So one of the things that we can see is that it's starting at the end of a 777-day period, this 11,410 days, and bringing us seven years prior to April 5th, 2030. So it's not starting on November 9th, 1989, or November 9th, 2019. It's starting on this December 26th date. And, you know, we could say that this is some kind of coincidence, you know, that maybe this is a wrong application of these numbers, but it, it does fit in with what we understand about Tola and Jair. This is about uh, this structure of prophecy, the significance of these prophecies. So the darkness prior to July 18th, the way that we looked at it before, is it was the darkness relating first to the fact that July 18, 2020 was going to fail, right? But it was also a darkness regarding our own characters, right? So, so we didn't know what was coming after July 18, but we also weren't prepared for what we didn't know was coming whether it was July 18th being fulfilled or not, we were not prepared for it. 
And so what this line is trying to show us or to demonstrate to us is that we weren't prepared. And, and, um, and this is going to be seen in this first message. So one of the things about this first message, we've chosen some, some dates here. We have October 30th, which is the eighth month, 13th day on the biblical calendar. And we usually do the 13th day of the eighth month, but we wrote it this way so you can clearly see Palmonai. So it's October 30th, 2020. This is going to be this meeting um, where they set up this uh, committee that's supposed to study uh, why we were disappointed with July 18th. So you, you can see that if it's not knowing that July 18th is a disappointment, that having this, these, this committee set up to examine why the prediction failed, that would be clearly that the first angel that arrives is really the failure of the prediction. So now we're going to examine that. Now that's going to be formalized by this committee. This committee has already predetermined what the result of this study and examination is going to be. Right? Now this is going to be manifest or empowered on December 6, 2020. Um, and uh, that empowerment is just a rejection of everything in this message, even though they try to say it's just a rejection that July 18th was the mistake, they're actually not addressing the real problems. That is, November 9th, 2019 was also predicted by this movement. And that was based upon uh, a dispensationalist, a Protestant understanding of, of how to study God's word. It's dispensationalism. And um, that was the basis for November 9th, at least, you know, by Parminder and Tess. So they never actually address that problem. They don't address the distinctions between what we were doing and what Parminder was doing. And, and also Parminder wasn't the one who started the symbolic use of numbers, right? So they, they reject that, the, the symbols of dates and so forth. But that actually has nothing to do with Parminder. That has to do with Jeff specifically in this movement. So anyway, we know the declaration on December 6, 2020. That's going to be 12, 6, right? 126 is the symbol of um, Daniel chapter 5, right? The writing on the wall, 126 shekels. And it's also part of Parminder's prophecy that is, Parminder, in his time setting, used 126. So, um, in a sense here, um, we're just going to put 126 Parminder, because, oops, they're, they're actually uh, reiterating Parminder's rejection of July 18th, but they do nothing to address Parminder's errors. Right. So they're actually making the same arguments as Parminder. And so uh, I think we put 120 sh shekels here. Right. So so this is just a continuation of Parminder's errors. This declaration. Because he's going to reject what we did to establish July 18, and they're going to use the same arguments, and yet they do nothing to undermine Parminder's time setting because they're using his arguments. So, so that's kind of a problem there that uh, they don't recognize. Now, sometimes we could say that a formalization is when something is written out, right? So, you know, we could have said, you know, the formalization was December 6th. But the formalization here is this meeting. That's where this attack is formalized. And then it's going to be empowered on December 6th. And I think this makes the most sense. Now, we, we have the symbolic date, of course, of uh, the 
biblical date there in October 13th, the eighth month, 13th day. Um, and then we have a symbolical date here, December uh, 6, 2020. And, and of course, July 18, uh, also, if you take seven times 18, you also get uh, 126. So you can see how this is all related together. Right, this is Palmoni at work, all these symbolic dates. Um, and of course, if you multiply that by 20, you get uh, 2020. And we have the same thing here, of course, both of these um, produce 126, December 26, just directly 12, six. And again, you would have the 25, 20 there. And we can see how that relates to Palmoni because Palmoni is going to address that issue of the 25, 20 in Daniel 8, 13, as well as the 2300 days. So we can see how this is all tied together symbolically these three events. <clears throat> and we also know that the 2300 days uh, relates to um, uh, the 2520 in Daniel chapter uh, eight, right? Because they're gonna ask the question, how long shall be the 2520? And it says unto 2300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So that's gonna tie these 2520s to the 2300 days. Now, when we studied this first, Dwight had suggested there was like a chiastic structure because we have the 220 years and then the 2300 years to get the 2520. And this, we're gonna have the 23 first and the 22 afterwards. So there is a type of chiasm here. Um, so, is everybody happy with that so far? At this point. Okay. Now this brings us to um, March 27th. Okay, somebody else had a comment, Stephen? Yeah, I was just gonna say the darkness uh, prior to Tula and J year, we would normally, I would anticipate that would be the three years of Amalek. Right. Ezraim. Okay. And so you did maybe we had connected with Bumalek to Permember. Yeah. So you would maybe connect his death in a sense uh, with the Permender's uh, maybe ending it 9th of November 2019. Okay, so I understand what you're saying. So, so what we're saying, so, so we could, there's a good argument that we would put this at November 9th, right? We would say, well, this is Parminder's teaching. Now, the thing about the Abimelech is um, that Abimelech's representing Parminder's influence in the message after November 9th, right? And, and, so what Stephen is saying is that we have the three years and Tola and Jair arise after this three years of Abimelech. But remember when we're looking at, at these lines uh, that we don't necessarily just have one follow the other, that there's often an overlap of these lines. Um, okay, and then Angela asks a question. So just, just to kind of... Um, there's a couple of things I want to bring up. First, first, before we even get there, there is a paper which I recently edited because it had all kinds of typos in it. Um, but I had posted in on September, uh, I believe it was September 26th. Um, I had posted this paper. Uh, it's called A Review of the Truth About Veil PR. That is, there's two videos a review of two videos by Parminder Bryant on the truth about Baal Peor. Um, 
Um, so I'm just going to put the link here to my academia one in the chat. So people want to go look at that. And I'll put that link also in the, on the YouTube video. Um, and this is pretty enlightening. So, I mean, obviously I wrote this, you know, like a couple of months after July 18th. Um, and what, what somebody had done is they had given a transcript of these two presentations of Parminder. And uh, the two presentations, obviously, are being translated. So they, they weren't very long. It's pretty short. But I just go through point by point uh, what is presented in those videos. And, and, and you can see how that relates to what we have been studying in these, this understanding of the lines about Parminder's message. So, so I suggest that people take a look at that. Um, now, so the point then that's being made, so let's go back to what uh, Stephen has brought up. So when we look at the line of Abimelech, we actually had a rather complex line and I still need to do some editing on this. Um, because these two here don't show all the detail. And we got this, Jotham's line. So we had taken Jotham's line as beginning on November 9th, going to December 25th. So one of the things we see with this parable is that this parable is, is going up into our time, right? And there's gonna be the olive fig and the vine. And then we see um, we have uh, Jotham's and, and here was Jotham's line so Jotham and Jotham's parable pardon me so we got two different things Jotham's line and Jotham's parable and then the third is Abimelech's downfall now originally we had named this one Abimelech's downfall Jotham's parable but as we examine this, what we realized is that this bramble here at the end, so these are Jotham's line and now what we call Jotham's parable, uh, this bramble at the end, this January 11th, 2023 date, is, is actually Abimelech's downfall. And this is going to go from December 25th, 2021 to April 5th, 2030. So if we look at Abimelech, um, what what is going to be described in this is okay. Simple way. First, we have Jotham's line. Jotham's line is the truths that are unfolded regarding chronology and time that are going to answer against the time setting of Parminder. So Parminder is setting time based upon the Protestant understanding. He's using dispensationalism as an argument, right? So he's he's not following Miller's rules. And so we're saying that this is this Baal Bareth, the, the Lord of the covenant, the, right? Bareth being a covenant. But this is a false covenant. This is Protestantism, the worship of Baal. And um, so Jotham's line shows those truths that are being unveiled. And they're going to counteract what Abimelech is doing. Now, we call this Abimelech's downfall, but really this is Jotham's parable. And it's during the period in which Abimelech, now Abimelech here is not Parminder, but it's the teachings of Parminder regarding time, that as we pass through these 777 days, that are going to be, uh, that we're going to be uh, corrected. Now, each of these dates, November 9th, July 18th, December 25th, these three main dates, the arrival of these three messages, are going to be representing uh, represented by the all of the fig and the vine that reject um, uh, the entreaty of the trees uh, to be made kings over them, right? That is, the trees represent this call to make time and these dates uh, serve a purpose that they're not meant to serve. But the bramble is going to pick that up. Now, the bramble 
when we look at Abimelech's downfall, the Bramble, we obviously know Abimelech occurs during that period. Right, that's the three years. But the three years end on December 25th, 2021. So, Stephen, to address what you're saying, we know that Parminder, that Sisera, ends on November 9th. But on December 25th, 2021, we have this reign of Abimelech, so to speak, at the end of our 777 days. Now, then we have Abimelech's downfall, and that's going to be the events after December 25th. So I know you weren't here for that study. So when we now look at this line, it's going to be addressing really the same, the same problem after Abimelech. Now, Abimelech, of course, is going to continue to December 25th, 2021, his downfall. So this is going to pick up on July 18th as this date, as this first message. December 25th, 2021 is going to be a formalization of the second message. So, so we don't just have things follow sequentially. They overlap. They cover the ground, the same ground, but with very specific uh, messages that relate to specific darknesses. And so the darkness here in Tola and Jair then, is, is the darkness that occurs in this movement regarding, first, the failure of July 18th, which is not something that Parminder is predicting, in, so to speak, like he's not predicting July 18th. He might think it's going to fail, but, but he's not predicting July 18th. But this movement is proclaiming July 18th. Parminder isn't. And so... People, though, who are looking to July 18th in the same spirit that Parminder and Tess's followers were looking to November 9th, they're going to be disappointed, right? Because they're really just saying, well, our July 18th is going to be the defeat of Parminder, right, in the way that and, and Jeff, the way that he lined it up was uh, the prophets of Baal and, and Elijah on Mount Carmel. Of course, July 18th didn't turn out the way that we expected. But that's because we, it's not that we misapplied uh, the application, because July 18th isn't just a singular event. It will this message will defeat the message of Parminder, but it's stretched up over a longer period of time. So this darkness here has to do with our misapprehension of our own characters, but also not fully understanding the use of time in this movement. And so we're going to see that the first message is going to be this attack against July 18th. Um, now, if we looked at this on the surface, we would say, well, these are the correct messages. But here, in Tola and Jair, it's not what is being said on December 6, 2020, that's correct, or what they're doing on October 30th. It's what they're attacking and what they're not attacking. So they're attacking the truth, but they're not attacking the error but the error is being demonstrated. And that error is Parminder's error that has continued. I know that's a long explanation, but, but does that help, Stephen? Well, it uh, does provide an alternative. Okay. Viewpoint. Yeah. So, I mean, I can see the point where we could just take this and bring it over to November 9th. But based upon this whole line, and especially what the symbols are going to show in the next part, um, I think is significant. The other thing is, you know, when we took Joel Tol and Jair, so Angela had made a comment, which I, I don't know if I fully understood. 
Uh, but she said, I'm wondering whether the sum of the Hebrew symbols for Tola and Jair can be connected to Daniel 11, verse 41. So the Sunday law. And what she's just saying simply is that 11,410 is just 10 times 1141, right? Uh, so that should be obvious there. Now, now this is the Sunday law. Right, so let's look at Daniel 11, verse 41. I know we're all familiar with it, but um, and, and I don't think this is wrong. I think that she might be correct. But we need to know how that would fit in exactly. So in a Daniel 11, verse 41, it says, he shall enter also into the glorious land, now, this was a huge issue in, in Jeff's history because uh, the glorious land, which many people would think was Jerusalem, uh, Jeff is going to apply to the United States. Right? So he's not going to take this as Jerusalem, but he's going to take this as the promised land in our time because this is after 1989. And many shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand even Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. So one of the things we say about our lives is that we're in the time of the Sunday law, right? And we've been in the time of the Sunday law ever since 9-11. Now that's in our line. Ellen White sees the Sunday law as a point in the future where the mighty angel of Revelation 18 comes down. And we see that the mighty angel of Revelation 18 comes down at 9-11. But we're not contradicting Ellen White. We're just zoomed in to the Sunday law, and it produces our line. As every waymark, when zoomed into, produces a line. And that line is this repeat of history. So if we're going to take what um, Angela is saying here, uh, we're going to take... Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon are going to escape. In this context, if we're going to put it here in this line, because um, we put it on the bigger line as Edom, Moab, and Ammon representing the Protestant world. These are the Protestants who are going to uh, be true Protestants, right? Um, they're going to recognize the actions that are happening in the world as opposed to God, and they're going to stand with the Sabbath, the Sabbath keepers, right? With the Seventh-day Adventists in opposing the papacy. Now, in the context of what we're studying with this line, if we're going to apply it to our history, to our immediate history within this movement. Um, if it's going from December 26th, 1991, if we're going to take that 11,410 days, and we're going to say that that's, that's referring to uh, Daniel 1141, can we see that that can apply? But it's going to bring us all the way to uh, our time, 2023, beginning a period of seven years, going to April 5th, 2030. So it's going to bring us to uh, March 23rd, 2023. Now, it's, it is the beginning of the Sunday law. So can we say that... Um, that all of the, that this verse is representing that period of time on our bigger line. The Tola and Jair are representing that whole history, and that history is the history of the Sunday law. Right? And we know that there's more verses here, but it's the Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. This is pro these are Protestants, but they're going to reject the Protestant, the apostate Protestant interpretation of, of prophecy. 
and they're going to stand with God's people. Does that fit in with what we see in this line of Tola and Jair? Even though we're just starting this on July 18th. Now, Tola is a worm, a symbol of ignominy. I always have trouble pronouncing that. Ignominous. Um, due to failure, disappointment of July 18, 2020, Jair, enlightening of the knowledge of God, gives to those who daily study his word in this movement. So we can see this, uh, the worm and enlightenment. Gloria says enlightenment referring to the U.S. as a result of sanctification. And 323.23 are also chiastic figures. 32.323. 3, 3, 3, 3. March 23rd, 2023. So I, I think Angela's points are good. And the ignominy. Economy, I think I'm just um, is is the message itself, right? And and within the movement, that is, we're going to see that the majority of the movement, and FFA is going to re represent the majority of the movement in rejecting July 18th with their December 6, 2020 declaration. Uh, it leaves. Uh, and, and the thing is, it's not done, right? So we know that many people in the movement still accept the principles laid down in the December 20, December 6, 2020 declaration, and yet still hold to the views of Parminder, right? So that they, they reject the basis for July 18th, the true basis for July 18th. And their time setting is based on Parminder's methodology. That still exists within the movement, right? So I've consistently made the case way back in 2018 when we first set dates is that we can't transgress Ellen White's counsel regarding time setting. And we are hearing in this movement that we have to disregard those counsels regarding time setting. That is, we need to be able to set time. That's what's being taught in this movement. And that is error. We can't set time. We can measure time, and we can see that when the time has passed, it was the time. We can see what the events are. But we can't predict events. Even though we have dates in the future, we don't know what they mean. We don't even know if those dates will arrive. We don't even know if they mark a specific event. We know simply that they have a symbolic connection to our lives. And they're a witness against the time setting that's being done. And that's, that's the thing that may seem sort of ironic, is that all of this chronology, all of these symbolic use of dates, all of this time that we've been using has always been a witness against time setting. And this to me is, has always been consistent that we can, we can mark a date in the future, but we can't know what it is. We can't know if it's even significant as an event. <clears throat> now, Angela puts uh, Daniel 2 uh, verse 20 to 22. Um, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. And if we apply this to a lie, we can see quite clearly that God is in control. We are not in control. We're not the monthly pronosticators. We're not astrologers. We're not soothsayers. Right? We are following Palmoni. We're examining 
the prophecies of the Bible, the scriptures. We're looking at the symbols that are there. And we're watching and waiting. Watching and waiting doesn't mean just sitting there twiddling your thumbs and waiting for some event to happen and then acting. Watching and waiting is an active role that we have in studying the scriptures, observing the signs of the times, and knowing where we are in earth's history. And, and time shows us that. But when we try to use time to predict some event in the future and proclaim a message based on time, Ellen White says the third angel's message does not hang on time. That there is no time prophecy that we have that we can predict some event. And she lists basically everything, right? We can't predict the second coming, the Sunday law, the outpouring of the latter rain, the close of probation, or any promise of special significance. And so... We can't reject that counsel. Now we can observe the events. We can observe the dates. We can draw them on a line. And we can even have some dates in the future. But we can't know what those dates mean until after they are passed. And even then they may just be symbolic dates. No event may occur. Okay, so Angela says, the Magi consulted and believed prophetic writings concerning Messiah's birth. They didn't divine the future. Right, so they weren't, um, they were looking at prophecy, right? Now, they noticed that it was the time for Christ to come. See, and this is a problem, because if you take the arguments that we can't, um, You know, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Lord has placed in his own power, right? No man knoweth the day or the hour, right? As we talked about before. Obviously, time is part of our movement. And we know that the Millerites, they predicted an event that was prophesied in the scriptures. They got the correct time at the wrong event. That is, they didn't fully understand that the Day of Atonement was not a singular day, that it's a period of time. So they, they found the start of the Day of Atonement, but they expected that Jesus was going to return then. Now, people argue that we can't use time, and, and it could seem like I'm arguing against myself, right? Because we know that the Millerites set dates and our movement set dates but we set dates in according with god's leading the fact that those dates failed that, that the events that we predicted on those dates failed doesn't mean that the dates were wrong doesn't mean it's wrong to have dates in the future which is what uh, the december 6th declaration declaration tried to say is we couldn't actually place any dates in the students the future symbolic or otherwise but yet if you look at the arguments that they're using right they're using parminder's arguments and that opened the door for parminder's thinking to still continue in this movement which it is so that is there are people in this movement who share some of the sentiments actually many of the sentiments in the December 6, 2020 declaration, except that they're still going to set dates, which seems contradictory to say that they accept that declaration, and yet they're still setting dates. And that's because they still accept the ideas that aren't being attacked in that declaration. But that is Parminder's dispensationalism. So Parminder's dispensationalism is still going to be used in this movement. Right? So there is a correct use of time. Right? There is a time when prophecies are fulfilled. Um, a different microphone? Okay, yes. Sorry about that, Aran. I don't have my microphone. 
again, I'm using to be better now, right? Sorry about that. I had my microphone unplugged. Okay, so sorry about that. Somebody should have noted that I sounded terrible. Okay, <clears throat> I guess I just sounded echoey. Is that what happened? Um, you could hear me, just it doesn't sound good, I'm sure. So anyway, this is, this is the issue that this line is showing. Because this is addressing time setting. How can we use time correctly? And we use it as a symbol. Right. It's a symbol, right? And, and that's what we're doing. We're analyzing our history with these lines that have been given to us, the line upon line, which is to measure uh, events, right? These are lines of judgment with way marks of righteousness. And these are to give light for our feet. And that's what it's done. What these lines have done is they consistently exposed error. They've been a witness against a misapplication of prophecy. And it's unfortunate that many people in the movement don't understand the lines and appear to have no interest in them. And yet they want to predict the future. They want to know what's coming. And yet the very thing that God gave us, they're not using. And, and just putting dates on a line is not enough. You need the structure. You need the darkness. You need the messages. They're a, arrival and formalization and empowerment. Right? So you can construct dates and you're going to see structure. But that's not enough. You have to have this structure that you see in front of you. It has to be a clear message. And these dates need to be connected in, in this logical way. You know, because Colin has, has set up some structures. He has all these structures with all these different dates and there's all these symbols, but he has no way to interpret them. He can't see what they mean. And so he guesses. He makes suggestions, which, which are predictions, but when they don't happen, they were just suggestions. And that's guessing, and that's not how we operate. We can't wait and see. We need to have assurance that God is leading. Now, so when we get to this arrival, we're saying it's the March 27th, 2021 day. Now, that's going to be of the 13th day of the 13th month in 2021. Now, um, uh, when we do this here, um, so we have March 27th, 2021. It's the 13th day of the 13th month on the biblical calendar. I was just confirming that that was the case. Now, on the rabbinic calendar, it also happens to be Passover. So that's just a note that um, I think is important here. Now, March 27, 2021, um, it's the 14th day of the first month on the rabbinic And why is that significant?
is there, so we have this 718 days. Um, now that's gonna be to March 15th, 2023. Um, whether this is the correct date or not, we know that that is significant. Um, but what we need to put here is March 23rd. So I'm going to, I'm just gonna put a, to use this here, this here. So I'm gonna put March 23rd, 2023. This is going to be eight days later, so whatever that means, I'm just putting it here, and I'm just going to put one of these things here. And I want to bring this all the way back to here. So this is going to be this other date. So this is going to be December 26th. Okay, so that's that um, here. And we're also going to connect this to... Daniel 11, verse 41, which is Sunday law. Okay. So we know that this is the first day of the first month. Okay, so what am I doing here? What are we looking at? How do we understand this? So this is going to be the date. Um, Good morning, everyone. Oops. Welcome to the study there we this go. morning. I'm going to continue this study. Um, looking. Okay, there we go. So that was um, the date that we came to understand Tola and Jair. That, that we put this line out. That was March 15th, 2023. And that's why we marked it here. So how is that significant? And how does this relate to the March 23rd, 2023 date? So we have it's two different dates. Oh. The first one uh, refers to the fall of, of the USSR. I mean, the formal fall when it was declared, it was no more. Yeah. Okay. December 26, 1991. Yeah. And that's going to lead us to March 23rd, 2023, which is the first day of the first month. And we have these different marches. We have March 27th, 2021, that we connected to March 15th, 2023, by 718 days, right? So we're saying that March 27th, 2021 is a symbolic date that represents the arrival of the second angel's message in this movement. 
It's going to be Passover on the rabbinic calendar. It's going to be the 13th day of the 13th month on the biblical calendar. It's going to be 273 symbol on the Gregorian. Right? And we're saying it's the arrival of the second angel's message. And it's going to connect to the repeat to the second angel's message arriving on March 25th or March 15th, 2023. Now, March 15th, 2023 um, is, uh, I gotta find it here. It's the 22nd day of the 12th month, right? So it's, you know, it's not a significant date particularly. Um, but the only, the only thing that we have there with March 15th is that it's this study of J year, right? We're going to draw this line out that we see here. It's going to be drawn out on March 15th. And we, we can see it 718 days from March 27th, 2021. And March 27, 2021 has these symbols there. And uh, then we have March 23rd, 2023, eight days after March 15th. Is there a connection there? And, and that, that, that is going to be seven biblical years prior to April 5th, 2030. So there's going to be the seven years there. So you have 777 days from the, Time of the end, 1989 to December 26, 11,410 days to March 23rd, 2023, and then seven biblical years to this April 5th, 2030 date, right? So that that's here in this line. So it, it's telling us something about time. Now, when we look at the second angel arriving, we put March 27th, 2021 there, and then we're going to have December 25th, 2021, the 20th day of the ninth month, that's going to be Colin's presentation. And then 49 days later, Odilio's presentation, February 12th, 2022. And they both symbolize, we're saying here, the 20th day of the ninth month, that is, they're tied together. Okay, so we got... Um, Angela is saying, uh, if 327 is the 14th day of the first month, again, some of the 11, 14, 10 is seen. Okay. Um, okay. So there's another comment there, which you can read. Um <clears throat> So how do we address this? This March 23rd, in relationship to this line. Because we, we have this line that ends on March, well, I guess it ends on September 3rd. We haven't addressed that date yet. But it goes to March 15th, the 718 days. And so we don't know what that is particularly, other than that we have this line of Tola and Jair that's going to tell us something. And so that becomes an arrival of the second message. And it's a repeat of March 27th, 2021, because in this line, that second message is the message of March 27th, 2021. So it's followed by December 25th. So that's going to be 273 days right, to December 25th, 2021, which is the 20th day of the ninth month. And we're just tying February 12th, even though it's not the 20th day of the ninth month, we're going to tie it to December 25th. Those two symbols go together.
And then we have September 3rd, 2022, which is the sixth day of the sixth month. So we have lots of symbolic dates, lots of symbols here. How do we justify this line? Now, the September 3rd date, of course, um, that date, um, I'm trying to remember now what September 3rd, 2022 was. Anybody remember offhand? It escapes my memory. It was something to do with the pre presentation by um, Colin. I do remember Colin identified that the 777 days until that presentation. Okay, he 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 did what in that presentation? It was identified that it was 777 days since the Y18. Okay, when he right. done the presentation, he marks that date himself. Okay, so so Colin marked that date. So when it comes to these 777 days, we're not really the ones marking them. Colin marks it. Right, so he's going to mark that there's 777 days. Okay. So, so this line becomes, becomes interesting because we can see that there is this, this message which is going to be Colin and Odilio's message. And then it's going to be uh, a third message arrives September 3rd. Now, again, Colin is correct. That is, he's now witnessing to this line, right? He's witnessing to the line of Tola and Jair. Okay. And... Uh, an interesting note in the chat, Julius Caesar was said to have been stabbed 23 times on the Ides of March. The Ides of March is March 15th um, in 44 BC. Okay, so we can see the 23 and the March 15 there. So, um, So we have this um, this uh, date, March fifteenth, twenty twenty three. It's 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 connected to this March twenty seventh, twenty twenty one. It's one hundred and ninety three days after Colin recognizes the seven 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 days. Um, so what would be the significance of this then? So we got um, this 193 days. Why do we put it there? Well, if you scramble it, you get the 390. Okay, so 391 in reverse, right? So, so simply, um, there's a number of things we can do here with these dates. So 193 days. That's 391, right? And we have the September 3rd date. Now, September 3rd, um, it's the sixth day of the sixth month. 
Now, we have all these different spans of time. I mean, we have the 718 days, um, it's 193 days. We have the 777 days. Uh, this all together is 970 days, right? So if we take 777 plus 193, it's going to be 970. Um, so lots of different spans of time that we could analyze, you know, the 49 days in there, the 273. Um, if we're going to take, uh, let me see here. Obviously, here we're going to have 525 days again from December 25th to September 3rd, because that's 525 minus 273. So you're going to get 252 days here. Um, Yeah, I know. I was thinking about that. The 970 can refer to Jeff's message on September 7th, 2019. Um, so lots of different symbols in here. But the main idea is that the message that arrives on March 27th uh, is about the message to the Levites. Now, I found it odd that in the movement, Nobody seemed very interested, either in March 27th, 2021, when it occurred, or in December 25th, 2021, other than, you know, in our study. So generally in the movement, uh, we had these dates in the future. Nobody's really talking about them. Right. Yet, you know, they're still part of our lines. So, so we need to, to try to recognize what this might mean. Just going to put that in there. <clears throat> so March 15th, other than that it's whether this it should be part of the lines here or not, you noted this 718 days, this might not be the fourth angel arrives, might be part of another line. Um, what we probably could do, I'm going to do this. Um, I'm just going to put this as a way mark. I mean, I'm going to do this. I'm happier with this. I'm not saying it's correct. Now, we have a number of places where we can actually mark the seven years uh, to April 5th, 2030, because we could have counted 25, 20 days. Um, so you can go 50 days past March 23rd. Um, so if you have March 23rd and you go... brings you to May, let me see if I can find this here. So, uh, 
let's do this one. So if we go to April 5th, 2030, um, and, and what we're doing is we're counting there at uh, the start of April 5th, 2030, and you subtract 25, 20 days from that, it brings you to May 12th. Now, May 12th is, is a Friday. Now, we had talked before about May 13th. Now, I have it here in this uh, chart over here at the bottom because that's going to be 777 days after March 27th, 2021. So May 13th. So let me see if I can get this right here. Do this. Um, so we have March 27th. That's seven years. But we also have May 13th. Now, May 13th is 11,900 days from October 13th, 1990. And... And that's the death of my brother, Dave. And then his wife dies 11,900 days later on May 13th. And so we can count that May 12th, May 13th day as also seven years prior to April 5th, 2030. It is if we go to the end of April 5th, 2030 and the beginning of March or, or May 13th, 2023, it's 25, 20 days. And remember that that date, May 13th, 2023, is 777 days after March 27th, 2021. So I think these are part of this line. Now, I think this line is rather complex in that what it is, Tola and J. Year, is this witness of this whole period of time. It's the second angel that's arrived in this movement, in this history, in this part of our history. And it relates to understanding uh, time. That is, you need to reject, in a sense, the messages of October 30th and December 6, 2020, in order to receive the message of March 27th, 2021. That is, those dates there represent messages that are given, but it's the rejection of those messages that are being marked as the way marks. Does that make sense? Because we can't say that this, this meeting on October 30th, 2020, where they... Uh, pre-decide the conclusion they have this foregone conclusion for this supposed examination of the disappointment and so the message that you need to see that's empowered is a message not of what December 6, 2020 declaration gives or what the October 30th uh, uh, 2020 committee uh, proposes it's, it's actually a rejection of what they're doing that is the formalization and the empowerment. Does that seem fair? <clears throat> it would seem to fit. So what we see with March 27th and December 25th and February 12th is uh, it's not so much the message of Colin or the message of Adilium, because God is giving us light there. But it's also the response to Colin's message and the response to Adilio's message based upon the recognition that there is light there that needs to be examined that is actually the formalization and the empowerment. Because on December 25th, 2021, there's lots that happens. There's Stephen's 777 years, 
from 457 to 321. There is the invitation being made to the movement to recognize December 25th, 2021, to come together and study it. And that's going to be rejected. And then Colin's presentation, which which I recognize is light that needs to be studied, but the study of it is rejected. That is, we have to just accept what Colin says about it. We can't examine it. And then February 12th, Odilia does a presentation, and that message has light in it. But again, it's not going to be examined, except in our studies, we're going to examine it. So when we get to September 3rd, again, we have a message. Colin's going to recognize these 777 days. But we're also going to recognize the 777 days. But their significance is going to be different. That is, we have a way of interpreting what September 3rd is. That it's part of a structure. It's a part of a line. And we're going to recognize that more specifically on March 15th, 2023, right? So that's going to be 193 days later. Right? Let me write this down. Okay, so hopefully people can see how this is being constructed. <clears throat> so we have that 718 days, and that I think is significant to this date. But we also have some other, some other dates, more specifically May 13th. So we're going to put another date here. So this is going to be 777 days. Okay, so so hopefully we can see the sense of this. Any questions about this? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, so I, I know it gets rather involved here. We have some dates that are just sort of parts of these lines, but not... But th these are, in a sense, all part of the fourth angel arriving. 
we got this March 15th, March 27th, May 13th. They're all in some way connected with this March 27th date um, and or April 5th, 2030. So it connects um, April 5th, 2030 to, to this history. Now, there are some other studies where we, we show these structures and how they fit. But anyway, that's as far as we can go today. So we're going to have to come back to this uh, tomorrow and uh, see how we can... construct this line and if it if it continues to make sense if we can accept its uh, the logic of it okay okay so um, let's close with prayer dear father in heaven thank you for the study this morning and we just ask that you can Continue uh, to help us, to watch over us as we struggle in this world. Um, we ask that you can help us to place our feet on a sure path, that we can be obedient to thy word, that we can reflect your character in all that we do. Bring us together again to study thy word according to thy will. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.